Hi guys, welcome to this week's clan chat. Um, sorry for the wee technical malfunction there, my um, Wi-Fi signal is low apparently. I hope you're all having a really good bank holiday Monday. It's been amazing weather, so I hope you've managed to get out in your garden. Um, I have had a little bit too much sun today, so I decided to come inside and do this live from indoors. Um, guys, if you're there, please say hello. Um, please hit the likes and loves. Hi Tam, um, let me know you're there. So this week I'm here to talk about some of my favourite dog walking spots in Edinburgh. And when I started putting the list together, I realised that there was actually loads of places. Um, so I'm breaking it down. So this week I'm going to talk about my favourite spots within Edinburgh that you can you can cover in like an hour, two hours. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll come back another week and I'll talk about places that are maybe slightly out with the city that if you've got like a full day like you've got a Sunday and you want to go on a proper adventure with your dog some places that you can go and that's locations that we go to on the clan chieftains crusades which I do once a month um, and it's a full adventure day for the dogs but we're not going to talk about that next week because next week I've got something really exciting for you I'm going to tell you about it now in case I forget at the end. So next week, I've got a very special guest um, who's coming on the Facebook Live. So same time, same place, half past seven on Monday. Um, Dominic Hodgson's got to come in and do a live interview with me. Now, for anyone who wasn't walk watching last week, um, Dom is a, a fantastic dog trainer who has an, um, a number one best-selling book, How to Be Your Dog's Superhero. He's also uh, runs an award-winning dog adventure company down in Sunderland. And he's also my private mentor as well. And he's absolutely fantastic at what he does. And he's very, very kindly agreed to come on next week. And he's got to give you guys some tips on, on how to have more fun with your dogs and little training tips and things to avoid. And he's, he's got to answer some questions for you as well. So you really want to be here next week for that because that's going to be really special. Um, hi, Harriet and Shirley. And hi, Carol as well. Have you got the popcorn out? Carol um, sent me a little picture earlier on of a bag of popcorn she's got to watch um, this live with tonight. Um, so guys, so yes, we're talking about my favourite spots in Edinburgh to go with the dogs. My first place, and um, the first place I went with my clan when I first started, was Kerstorfen Hill. So for those who don't know, it's on the west of the city, uh, funnily enough, in Kerstorfen. And it's just, it backs onto the zoo. And it's really easy to drive to. There is a car park at the top of Kames Road, um, or you can actually park at the top of Ball Green Road. Sorry, I'm just reading Carol's cop popcorn comment. So you can park at the top of um, Ball Green Road and just cross over um, Kerstorfen Road at the traffic lights, and there's a little gate there so you can get up that way. Or you can go up Clermiston Road and actually there's a few spots along there that you can park up. And Kerstorfen Hill is fantastic because there's so many ways around it. So you, you can go so many times and, and never go the same route. In fact, I mean, I've been going there for two years and a couple of weeks ago I found a new path that I didn't know existed there. So there's loads of great spots. And on days like today where it's really hot, it's perfect because you can get into the woods, into the shade, and the dogs can have a really good time and you're not going to worry too much about them overheating. But also on, on days that aren't as hot, because let's face it, this is Scotland, <laughs> um, there's like three big fields as well. So there's loads of space if you if you want to play fetch with your dog or you want them to have a really good run around. One thing that I would say to, to watch out for at Kerstorfen Hill. Hi, Tony. Hi. Hi. Um, one thing to watch out for at Kerstorfen Hill is horses. So quite often you will meet... Um, horses with riders on them especially on a Wednesday that seems to be the day that they're really out now these horses are used to dogs but obviously you need to be really careful so so if your dog's recall is not great it might be worth keeping them on a lead while you're there and if they have got good recall just make sure you're keeping them in eyesight um, and have a lead handy because I know I've come round a corner and literally come face to face with the horses before not had enough time to sort of see them coming and, and get the dogs on lead Fortunately, the dogs were all really beha well behaved. Um, but yeah, it's just something to be aware of. And you're going to meet potentially deers and, and other dogs as well. Um, and just on that subject, there is something that I would like to just take a couple of minutes to talk about. Um, and that's sort of like, I think you would call it dog walking etiquette. And I'm really sorry because I know that I'm probably teaching my granny how to suck eggs here. You know what I mean? I know that a lot of you know this. But if there's even like just one person watching this that, that isn't kind of aware of, of this um, policy, I guess you would say, it's worth saying because it, it's really important. 
And that's if you're out walking your dog and your dog's off lead and, and you see a dog approaching that is on lead, it's really important that you just kind of call out to that, that dog's owner and check if their dog's okay with other dogs and do they want you to pop your dog on a lead. Now, like, your dog can be the most super friendly, nicest, like, loveliest dog in the world. It's it's nothing about your dog. It's all about that dog. Um, and you don't know that dog's history. It might be a rescue dog. It might, um, you know, it might be a reactive dog. It might be really nervous or anxious. It could be a rescue dog. And that, that dog's owner could have been working with them for so long, trying to improve their confidence and reduce their stress. And just one experience of, of a, an off-lead dog with the absolute best of intentions running up to say hello can, can really knock that, that dog and that, that owner's training back quite far. And I think, like, the way to sort of, to maybe put it into context and bear with me because this might be a bit random but imagine you're at a party okay really good party we're all there now I'm the kind of person who I get drunk uh, I want to hug everybody you know I want to drag everyone up on the dance floor and have a really good time because because that's me and that that's who I am and I'm I'm not an aggressive drunk I don't want to fight with anyone when I'm drunk not at all you know there is that guy in the corner who's just sitting drinking you know and, and is maybe ready for a square go at the end of the night but that's not me you know I just want to be everyone's friend and then there's people that are, they're maybe, you know, backs to the wall of the party and they're having a really good time, but they're just minding their own business at the back, you know, and not really getting hugely involved. And then Willie's like, you get drunk. No, not often, not often. But yeah, so I could, if I'm the awfully dog and I'm that really happy bouncy in your face one at the party, you know, and I could go up to these people that are standing against, you know, against the wall, minding their own business. Now... Some person, and I'll get them, try to get them up to dance, you know what I mean? And, and the, there could be somebody who's like, actually, yeah, I'm cool with that. Let's go and dance. And that's brilliant. You know, and that's maybe the dog that's just on lead because, because maybe the dog's not got that good recall, you know? So, so the owner's fine. And they're like, yeah, come on, let your dog come and say hi. But you don't, the person that I go up to in the party to try to drag onto the dance floor when I'm drunk, I don't know that maybe, you know, maybe last year they were at a party, right? And they, and they got dragged on the dance floor by some crazy drunk person and they fell over and they broke their leg and they were off work for six months because they couldn't work because they do a physical job and then the stress of all that caused like loads of you know loads of stress and anxiety for them so now that I'm running up to them a year later trying to drag them onto the dance floor that's causing all these issues for them it's bringing back these bad memories and you know what I might even get a slap for it you know because they're like back off you know I don't want to dance and um, I don't know if that's a good analogy or not but that's like you know your dog could be super friendly and well-meaning and not going out to attack anyone but you don't know that other dog's history and and it's just and I probably talked really long about that but it's just so so important guys that if you if you see um, a dog on lead or even if the dog's not on lead and they're maybe just really close to the the person they're walking with do just take two seconds to shout out and check that it's okay to, for your dog to go up and say hi for for people who have a reactive or a, a nervous dog they will appreciate that so so much so it's really important um drunk no <laughs> jennifer knows me too well um so anyway i've kind of went off tangent so we'll go back so we talked about christoph and help um camo estate is my next favorite place so Camo's also West Edinburgh, obviously because that's that's where I live, so um, a lot of my favourite dog walking spots are. So um, Camo is, if you're driving out Queen's Ferry Road and you're heading out towards the bridges, um, and then there's a little turning off to the left just after that big main junction where you can turn right to go to Cramond or you can turn left to head towards the Maybury roundabout. If you carry on straight over that big junction and then turn left onto Camel Road and that takes you down to, to Camel Estate. So you can either park just outside the front on Camel Road itself or the road splits right or left you can go left and if you follow it around it's like a proper little windy road you want to go slowly because if you meet something coming the other way one of you is going to have to reverse and then there's actually a, a car park around there um which is a, a semi-decent size so you'd be able to get parked there and camo is fantastic again a bit like Kerstorf, and it's got a lot of wooded sheltered areas for hot days it's got a lot of big open fields where you can have a run about if it's if it's not like too hot for the dogs to do that and there is like um I mean, I wouldn't call it a pond. I don't really know what you'd call it. But there is, um, hi sunshine, hi Steph. Um, there's like a, a body of water there, I guess. And the dogs love a swim in that, but I always try to keep them 
to one side and you'll see it if you go one side looks really stagnant and then the other side has a little bit of fresh water coming into it the kind of far side so I always if I'm letting my dog the swamp yeah <laughs> um, Sunshine's dog and me had a little experience there once where he he um impersonated a swamp monster actually <laughs> um, came out completely covered in, in mud that was a few years ago before they gave a really good clean out <laughs> Mud Magnet Murphy. Um, but yeah, so anyway, Camel Guy is really, really good. Again, a bit like Kerstorfin, be prepared that you might bump into deer, squirrels, uh, rabbits and stuff like that. So just be conscious of that, especially if your dog does like a chase. Um, and let's face it, there's not many dogs that don't. Um, but yeah, Camel's a really great shout. We're so lucky to have that in Edinburgh. Um, the next place I want to talk about is, is possibly my favourite spot in Edinburgh to take the dogs especially on on a nice day and that is walking out to Cramond Island um, for those of you who haven't been you are missing such a great great experience so Cramond's kind of Cramond Beach is like northwest I would say and it's um you, you there's quite a big car park there so if you if you just stick that into your sat nav like a uh, Cramond Beach it'll take you to the car park um, I mean, like, Edinburgh City Council need to do some serious work on the potholes in that car park. They're a bit tragic, but it's a great big space and you can usually get parked in the shade there as well if, if you sort of look for that to keep your car nice and cool. Um, but if the tide is out and there's, and there's a big sign, and guys, please, if you haven't been before, check the sign because it gives you the safe crossing times out to the island. So when the tide's out, you can actually walk right out to the island. Um, you usually get a bit of four hour um, safe crossing time, four hours. Um, I would say you want to make sure you've probably got at least two hours because you're looking at maybe half an hour to walk out to the island, half an hour to walk back and then give yourself maybe an hour to go and explore. The dogs love it. You know, the smell, dogs love the beach, don't they? The smells and they get to paddle in the water and then they get out to the island, which is usually... Certainly during the week, it's not that busy, so you can have a good runabout and, and a great play. And the views back over Edinburgh are just my favourite views in Edinburgh. They're amazing. And actually, the, the picture that I used for the post about this live was actually taken from Cramond Island looking back over at Edinburgh. So that's a great one. Um, and if you do get out to Cramond and the tide is in, then you can absolutely go and play on the beach. The beach is fantastic. I think that's my favourite beach in Edinburgh. Um, but if it's looking really busy and you're not really keen to go there with your dog, what you can actually do when you come out the car park and come down the steps, if you go like left and walk to where the ice cream van is and then you can sort of turn a little bit to the left and you pass, there's a pub, I wish I knew what it was called, I don't know if anyone can help me with that, but there's a little pub there and if you walk past that you can actually get onto the River Almond walkway. And that's like a really good long walk. You can go, you can actually go for miles and it takes you along the River Ammon. So the dogs, the dogs absolutely love that because again, on a hot day, it's actually quite sheltered, quite shaded, but they can get into the river as well and have a really good play. Um, and there's a great little cafe as you're walking along that way. It's called the um, the Cramond Falls Cafe, I think, and they leave water out for the dogs as well. So that's brilliant. It's worth a stop there. But just be aware if you see that, if you're walking out and you see that, it's maybe worth getting your dog back on lead because there's a little bit of road and it is a dead end, but cars do kind of go up and down at parking. So if your dog you know doesn't really stick to heel just for that little bit it's probably just a couple of hundred meters it's worth getting them back on lead just until you get past that dead end and then they're safe off lead and it's really good after that so really good spot as well so i, I love cramming because you've got you know you can go to the car park and then you've got all these options you know you can go out to the island go along the beach you can go past the boardwalk cafe or you can go the other way and go along the ramond walkway so it's definitely one of our favorites and if you haven't been you you're really missing something go and check it out um, so the pub be the cram and in it could well be Tony I, 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 do you know what I feel it's like it's a beautiful It's a, you can tell it's like a really old pub white and black yeah that's it Tony's got it thank you very much the cram and in that's the one definitely worth checking out and I've heard they do really nice food as well so you can make a little day out of it um, cool so that's cram and so the next place we love to go is Arthur's Seat um, but we kind of go the the non touristy way when we when we do Arthur seat. So so I think everybody's been up once, and you know, like there's no way of getting up without meeting about five thousand tourists, and it's just chaos. And and that's not something that um, 
that I like to sort of subject my dogs to because it's you know there's it's just a bit too much too exciting for them so what we do is we go a little drive along Queen's Drive and there's loads of little laybys, so you can park up in one of the laybys and then get up to like it's like the other side of Arthur's seat. I don't, I don't know if it's still technically classed as Arthur's seat. I think it is. And and it's amazing. And you go up there and at the moment it, it's beautiful because all the gorse bushes are all in flower and it smells, smells amazing. And you get beautiful views out over the water and out over the east of um, Edinburgh. If you're a Hibs fan, you get an amazing view of the stadium from, the, from that side of Arthur's seat as well. Um, the one thing to to just be really conscious of, especially in this weather, is there's not really any water sources and it's quite exposed, so there's not a lot of shelter. So I would probably avoid that on a really hot day and even on just like a sort of normal day, I would definitely take a lot of water with you. I mean, we always have a big two litre bottle of water in my rucksack when I go out with the dogs anyway in a wee, a wee collapsible water bowl. But yeah, just, just bear that in mind because there, there isn't like a, a wee stream or anything for them to have a drink um, if, if, they're, if they're getting really thirsty. But yeah, the views. Arthur, I mean, we're so lucky in Edinburgh. It's insane. We have like all these amazingly beautiful places on our doorstep to take our dogs. It's, it's brilliant. Um... Sorry, Tam's just saying wanting to get to Edinburgh for years. Yeah, you should come. It, it's it's and yeah, bring. I mean, for 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 dog owners to come and visit this city, it's so dog friendly, and there's so many places you can go. It's it's just fantastic. Um, so the last place I wanted to talk to you about was somewhere that we've only really started going quite recently with the dogs because one of my little clan have moved a little bit closer to there, so we go there quite a lot now, and that is Blackford Hill, and then the Hermitage of Braid, which are all sort of together and Blackford Hill's great it's got amazing views like I love the views from there because you can be up there and you can see Arthur's seat and you can see the castle and you can see Christorphan Hill and if you turn around you can see the Pentlands you know so the views from the top of Blackford Hill are, are, are brilliant for very minimal effort and, and physical exertion to get there because you can actually drive right up Observatory Road and park, there's a little car park at the top and then to be fair, it's really not that much of a hike to get to the top of the hill, you know, you could you, like five minutes and, and you're up there getting amazing views. Um, of course, if you want to be like super healthy, you could park at the bottom of Observatory Road and, and walk up the whole way. Um, I don't do that, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> we drive up to the top. And then what we do is come down and go down into the uh, to the braids. And there's um, the braids burn runs right through. And, and that's brilliant because, again, on, on hot days like this, there's a huge wooded area. So you can be really sheltered and you can take your dogs down to the burn and you can walk right along. You know, it's a great long walk. You can have a, a really good walk out of it. And the dogs can nip in and out of the burn because it's not, it's not particularly deep at any point, you know. So I've got dogs in the clan who aren't swimmers, but they like a wee paddle and, and they love it there because they can go in and and cool down and have a wee play. Um, so that that's a, a fantastic spot and, and definitely worth checking out. It's not somewhere I'd say that I'd spent a lot of time up until one of my wee doggies moved closer to there and now we've found it and I'm like, how had I never checked this place out? Because it, it's stunning. It's, it's really, really beautiful. So I think that was everywhere I really wanted to talk about today um, in terms of in the city. As I say, what I'll do is I'll come back in a, a couple of weeks. So obviously next week is Dom, um, the interview with Dom. And then maybe the week after I'll come back and talk about places that you can go if you've got like a, a full day where you can really go out and have a good adventure. Um, some of the amazing places we go because we've found some, some fantastic spots that the dogs just absolutely love. So I'll share some of them with you another week. Um, but that's it really from me this week. Unless has anyone got any questions or comments at all? And guys, listen, if, if I've not mentioned one of your favourite dog walking spots, please stick it in the comments um, because, you know, other people can get the benefit of that. And that, that's the whole point of these. It's, it's sharing information so that dog, dog owners in Edinburgh can really get the, the best experience for their dogs. So if you've got any good ideas, pop them in the comments. Um, if you've got any dog owning friends or you know what, even if you've just got people, friends who like spending time outdoors, tag them in this because, yeah, I'm talking about these in a dog related context, but all of these places are, are beautiful, beautiful places. You don't need to have a dog to go and enjoy them, you know, um, but obviously if you've got a dog, they're all brilliant locations to go to. Um, 
So yeah, oh, Shannon wants to come and visit Edinburgh. Yeah, it, it's, do you know what? Such a beautiful city. I, I absolutely adore Edinburgh. Um, such a great, great place. So guys, please, if you've, if you've got anything from this, please hit the likes, please hit the loves. It means that more people might get to see it and get something out of it as well. Share it with your friends, tag your friends in it. Um, I really, really appreciate that. And um, please come back next Monday um, and and we'll have that interview with Dom and that will be loads of good dog training techniques and tricks and tips for you. Guys, that really is one that you don't want to miss. I really promise that. Okay, that's me for tonight. Thank you very much, guys, for listening. I'll see you next week for the, the next clan chat, okay? Bye.